Mr. President. Senator from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise because I want to express concerns that I have about a particular provision in the PACT Act. And it is my understanding the Senate is considering this later this week. We could be voting on cloture as early as tomorrow afternoon. Um, my concerns with the provision of the bill as drafted are, well, I and many of my colleagues share this concern. Uh, what we want to do is to ensure that the PACT Act is not used as a vehicle to dramatically increase spending outside of the objective of the bill, which is to cover specific health care and benefits for veterans. As it is written, as we are currently considering it, the PACT Act includes a budget gimmick that's designed to do exactly that. This gimmick was not in the House bill, but some senators found it necessary to add this. This gimmick is not necessary to achieve the underlying purpose of the legislation. The purpose of the legislation is to expand VA health care benefits and certain other benefits for veterans. I have a very simple proposed fix for this problem that will not reduce veteran benefits by a single dollar. It would allow the bill to fully achieve its original intent. Now, to explain this a little bit, Mr. President, I've got to explain a little bit about how the federal government spends money around here. As you know, Mr. President, we have two big categories of federal spending. We have what we call discretionary spending. And that is the spending that is appropriated annually by Congress. That spending is limited every year. There's a cap on how much can be spent in that category. That's the first category. The second category of federal spending we call mandatory spending. This is different from discretionary spending in the sense that it's kind of automatic spending. It occurs not by appropriation, it's driven by eligibility for various programs. People are eligible, so they get the payment, and it does not depend on a congressional appropriation. So those are the two big categories of spending. Now, the PACT Act, as I said, it addresses veterans' health care. Now, of course, as we all know, current law already obligates the VA to spend a great deal of money on veterans' health care and benefits, as it should. In particular, there's about $400 billion over the next 10 years that the VA will spend on veterans' toxic exposure care and benefits, about $400 billion. That's existing law. That's going to happen no matter what we do with this bill. That $400 billion has always been categorized in the discretionary spending category of federal spending. And therefore, it's subject to caps, limits. Now, what the PACT Act does is it expands this obligation on the part of the VA. And it expands it a lot by about $280 billion over the next 10 years. And it takes all of that new spending, the $280 billion of new spending that the VA will spend under the PACT Act, and it puts it in the mandatory spending category. Not the discretionary, but the mandatory spending category. Now, we can argue about whether or not that was a good idea, but that's not my issue on the floor this evening, Mr. President. I have no quarrels with the $280 billion being in the mandatory category. That's not the issue at hand. Here's the problem with this bill. Here's the budgetary gimmick. This is what is outrageous. The bill takes the $400 billion that I mentioned earlier, the $400 billion that is obligated to be spent by the Veterans Administration by legislation passed many years ago, money that's going to be spent, it enables that spending to be shifted from the discretionary category to the mandatory category of spending. Now you could say, well, so what? The government's still going to spend the money either way. That's true. It's going to go for the same purpose to the same people who need it. That's all true. So why does it matter? Why did the Senate authors of this bill, unlike the House, why did they decide it's necessary to take this big category of spending that's already in existing law and move it from the discretionary spending category to the mandatory category? 
Well, here's the reason. As I said earlier, there are caps on how much discretionary spending can occur in any given year. By moving this big category of spending, this $400 billion, out of the discretionary category and putting it into mandatory, you create this big hole under the cap. That's what's going on here. Now, when you create that big hole, guess what happens with that big hole? It gets filled with spending on who knows what. That's what's going on here. This is unbelievable. Now, again, I want to stress, my, my quarrel here is not with the underlying purpose of the bill or the substance. And sure, we could talk about ways it could be improved, but that's not what this is about. It's about a budget gimmick that's designed to allow hundreds of billions of dollars in additional unrelated spending, having nothing to do with veterans. Could be anything. It's this big, gaping hole that some folks around here created by design in our discretionary spending category. You know what it really comes down to? It's about Congress hiding behind an important veterans care bill a massive unrelated spending binge. That's what this amounts to. Now that would be objectionable at any time under any circumstances as far as I'm concerned. But it's unbelievable that this provision is snuck into this bill at a time like this. What I'm referring to is the obvious fact that our entire economy, American families, virtually all of them are being racked by out of control inflation. Inflation is at a 40 year high. 40 years, I mean, roughly half of all Americans have never been alive with inflation this high. And there's no avoiding it. It's at the gas pump, it's at the grocery store, it's at the rent, it's everywhere. Well. How did this inflation come about? Well, a big part of it came from too much government spending and lax easy money monetary policy. That's a, always a very dangerous combination. And sure enough, it gave us this out of control inflation. Well, this gimmick is going to make it worse. It's going to add $400 billion over 10 years in totally unrelated, unnecessary spending. Again, we're not talking about veterans health care. That is not what I'm here to talk about. We're talking about the other $400 billion. We haven't seen exactly what that's going to consist of. Who knows? But you can be sure that a big hole under the spending caps is not going to be left as a big hole. So this is a terrible policy. So here, I've got a simple suggestion. Here's all we need to do. We leave the $280 billion, the new spending for veterans' health care that the bill contemplates, leave that in mandatory spending. I'm, that's fine. But we simply would modify the bill to keep the $400 billion that we're going to spend anyway in the category where it's always been, the discretionary spending category. This doesn't cut a dime in veteran spending, but it would avoid creating this huge hole for all kinds of new and unrelated spending. So again, I stress one more time for the people who might choose to, to listen, this doesn't reduce spending on veterans' health care or benefits of any kind by a single penny. And the change that I'm looking for would not in any way impede the ability of veterans to get the health care that they're going to get under this bill as a result of toxic exposure. It's not about any of that. It's only about preventing this excessive, unrelating, unrelated spending in we don't even know yet what categories, which was inserted in this bill. So, Mr. President, I think this is a simple fix. Unfortunately, it appears we're still not in the business of contemplating amendments in this chamber. We were promised there would be amendments at the beginning of this process. Amendments have always historically been a fundamental way that we litigate our differences and iterate our way to solutions, but we're not allowed to do this. I've not been allowed to offer an amendment. Nobody has. So I intend to vote against cloture, which, as you know, Mr. President, 
is the procedural vote that ends debate and ends the amendments and allows the body to get on to final passage. I'm not going to vote for cloture because we haven't had this debate yet. We haven't had this vote on this outrageous budget gimmick that has nothing to do with the underlying purpose of the bill. So I'm going to urge my colleagues to join me in voting against cloture. And what will happen if we deny cloture? What, happened, what if we succeed and the chamber, the body, is unable to achieve cloture? Well, then I think I know what would happen. Our Democratic colleagues would work with us to fix the gimmick. That's what would happen. And then the bill would move forward with all the same benefits for veterans that it has, that it's always had as a bill. And we would do this without introducing this massive unrelated spending bill. Now, why am I confident? that that's what the outcome would be, because I think our Democratic colleagues are very unlikely to forego passing a really important veterans' health bill for the sake of their unrelated spending blitz. I think, as much as they want to go on that spending binge, they would take a pass on that if that's what they have to do to get this veterans' bill done. So that's how this would end. And that is why, Mr. President, once again, I urge my colleagues, join me in a simple fix for a terrible budget gimmick, and let's do this quickly. And if we're not allowed to do this any other way, then let's de deny cloture tomorrow on the cloture vote, and then we'll be able to fix it promptly thereafter. I yield the floor.